Good morning, students. This lesson is of class ninth for the subject of physics. Topic, types of barometer and variation of atmospheric pressure with altitude, which is covered in chapter four, pressure and fluids. Pressure and fluids and atmospheric pressure of your textbook titled Concise Physics by Selena Publications. Now students, we have already done simple barometer and today we will learn the demerits of simple barometer. Now children, in case of a simple barometer, we were having a glass container known as trough or a beaker in which you have placed a mercury and then you have tilted a glass tube at the top. Now this glass tube was not having any protection. That is, it can be broken if somebody hits it. So that was one of the drawbacks. Secondly, the surface of the mercury in the trough the surface of the mercury in the trough was exposed to atmospheric pressure. And moreover, the impurities can also get inside it. For example, dust particles or water vapors can enter this surface of the mercury, due to which the results of atmospheric pressure can vary and you can get an inaccurate reading of barometer. Moreover, it is also very inconvenient to move this barometer from one place to another. Children, moreover, a scale cannot be fixed with the tube. How can you fix a scale with the tube to measure atmospheric pressure? And as we have already studied, the change in the level of mercury will result in atmospheric pressure. But then it was very tough for us to put a scale on it. So all these were the demerits of a simple barometer. Students here, uh, the scientist is making a simple barometer. He is holding a glass tube. You can see this glass tube. This complete is a glass tube and the silvered part he has poured mercury inside it, this silver, this. This is mercury, mercury in the glass tube, okay? So in this glass tube, he has poured mercury uh, and then what he is doing? He will, he is adding mercury here, see? This is the way he adds mercury. So mercury has been added here, this glass tube and this is put inside this small beaker known as trough. Here also you are having mercury. Okay, students. So the glass trough was filled with mercury. The tube is fixed with the mercury. And listen, what is happening here, children? See, what I want to tell you that this uh, glass beaker is exposed to here. It can happen that dust particles can go inside this mercury and can make this imp mercury impure. Even uh, dust particles, water droplets can also go inside it. And due to impure mercury, you can get inaccurate reading because that will cause extra pressure on the mercury column. Moreover, handling this beaker, and again, it is tough to join a scale here, isn't it? So have a look, children. So. This, this mercury is showing it is rising or stopping. That shows the level of mercury. And then they are saying the atmospheric pressure, as the atmospheric pressure applies on the beaker, the mercury in the glass tube starts rising upward. See what he is doing? He has to put a scale sidewise to find the answer that it is approximately 744 millimeter. So children, it is so tough to carry whole of the equipment from one place to another and mercury was also exposed. So what happens here? It was tough for us to 
uh, use this barometer in our normal condition or in our laboratories also. So all these drawbacks were covered in further two types of barometer which we'll study. One is Fortin's barometer and the other is aneroid barometer. So you can see the diagram of aneroid barometer shown to you. This is an aneroid barometer. It comes in a dial form and there are different different barometers. Pressure readings are written here. So this is an aneroid barometer. And 14's barometer is shown to you in the next page. Children, 14's barometer is basically simple barometer only. But what you have done here, you have put whole of the apparatus of simple barometer in a wooden case. What you have done, you have placed the entire part in a wooden case. You have, uh, you have already given protection to the glass tube. See, this is the barometer tube inside. Okay, so you can have a wooden case or a brass tube is kept as a protection. And this whole equipment can be put in a wooden case also. Fine. And even the mercury here, you can see the screw. This screw is used to pour in certain mercury inside this level. You can put mercury, open the screw, put mercury inside it, and then you can close the screw. So this is an easy form to carry. And you can port this barometer from one place to another. Students, this is a 14th barometer, which is usually used in laboratories also. You can see a scale attached to it. This will be in a wooden case and protections are given over here. So children, the, this is a lab in which you can put a 14th barometer. Here you are having a screw from where you can pour. See, this is a screw, open it. You can put mercury here. This is a brass tip till you, which you have to put mercury. This is a scale from where you can get the reading of atmospheric pressure. So if you put mercury inside this, see, this is a mercury tube. You put it inside mercury until this brass tip is filled. See, now switch off this, turn this screw such that this uh, brass tip can find. Look here, students, what you have done. When, when initially you are pouring mercury, you have to pour only up to the level this tip is touching it. Then screw, kindly close the screw, tight the screw such that the mercury is raised up to this brim. And then when it is done, your tip has raised, check the atmospheric pressure. Mercury level will reach at this point. This shows a pressure of one atmosphere. 118, one atmospheric pressure. So this is the way how you find the atmospheric pressure in 14's barometer. Okay, students. Now let's move further. So 14's barometer is basically a modified form of simple barometer where you are covering all the drawbacks of simple barometer. It is used in laboratory to measure the atmospheric pressure. In this barometer, mercury is used as barometric liquid. The glass tube is protected by enclosing it in a brass case. And there is a leather cup of glass vessel. Here, you can see that leather cup, leather bag here, this where you're putting mercury. This leather cup can be raised up or lowered down with the help of screw to adjust the mercury level in the glass vessel. You can refer the diagram given on page number 98 of your physics book. See figure number 4.20. Now coming to the aneroid barometer, children. This barometer does not have any liquid inside it. It does not use mercury as a barometric liquid. It is light and portable and can be easily carried from one place to another. It is calibrated, it is designed, it is scaled in such a way that it can directly read atmospheric pressure. 
children aneroid in itself means dry they are called dry because they are not containing any liquid any fluid in them they just work on the bulging and compression of a diaphragm so children what are the uses of a barometer barometer is used no doubt it is used to measure atmospheric pressure at a place and children moreover barometer is responsible for giving you weather forecasting the monsoons are coming the wind will be coming the cyclone is approaching all these things comes from the reading of a barometer and there is a device known as altimeter which is used to measure the height of the height of the way of any object from sea level now children let us learn the variation of atmospheric pressure with altitude children as altitude increases as you go above atmospheric pressure decreases why so it happens because there is decrease in height of air column the decrease in height of air column further causes a decrease a linear decrease in the atmospheric pressure while the density of air also decreases as you move up in the altitude and this decrease in density is non linear if height decreases height of air column decrease in height of air column causes linear decrease in atmospheric pressure linear means a straight line decrease while if density of air decreases then there is a non linear decrease in atmospheric pressure children decrease means the slope is coming down we did in class 8 linear means straight line non linear means not a line so children you can see the graph of non linear given on page number 4 of the pdf sent to you on 19th july 2021 so here i have shown you a non linear decrease in atmospheric pressure with density above the height level so children now coming back to what we were studying so we will discuss both the points in detail and for that see page number 3 of the pdf and observe figure number 1 children the atmospheric pressure the atmosphere can be considered to consist of number of air layers for example layer d layer e layer f i have shown three layers to you each layer experiences a pressure on it due to the thrust of air column now for example on layer d thrust of e as well as thrust of layer f weight of f and e is applicable for for the air layer of d similarly if i talk about air layer e only the thrust of f layer will be applicable here because weight acts always downward d cannot apply thrust on e so thrust means weight so only f can put its weight on e while f can put the weight on d also and e layer e can also put weight on d also so what does it mean it means that thrust on d will be more as compared to e since e and f both are putting thrust on d so d will be having more thrust more is the thrust more is the pressure so the air pressure at point d will be more 
4 as compared to E and further layer F will have least pressure. So we say as we move above the atmospheric pressure, the thrust applied on the layers decreases due to which atmospheric pressure also decreases. Is it fine students? So this is our first point. Now coming to the second point, as you can see in figure one, the lower layer D gets compressed because of the weight of the upper layers, that is layer D and E, E and F, resulting in more denser air layers at point A. So children, at point D, the density of air is more as compared to the density of air at point F. This decrease in density with increase in altitude is non-linear. This decrease is non-linear. And as we know that atmospheric pressure is equal to H rho G, P is equal to depth into density into G. So if density at higher altitudes decreases, then atmospheric pressure above sea level also decreases in a non-linear way. This non-linear way is shown in figure number two as a graph between, whenever you are making graph, kindly write down what is along x-axis and what is along y-axis. So along x-axis, we are taking height above sea level and along y-axis, we are taking atmospheric pressure. So children, the graph is non-linear. Kindly don't touch this graph on x-axis. You are not supposed to touch the graph with x-axis and the graph should be non-linear. Don't draw it as a straight line. That will be completely wrong. Is it fine, children? Now, let us study the consequences of variation of atmospheric pressure with high altitude. Children, you must have noticed that at high altitudes, few people, it is tough for them to breathe. Breathing becomes difficult and even nose bleeding may occur due to excessive blood pressure as compared to atmospheric pressure. As you move above, atmospheric pressure decreases, but your blood pressure remains same. Now children, look here. When you were at sea level, at this level, your blood pressure and atmospheric pressure were equal. As you moved up, your atmospheric pressure is decreasing while your blood pressure is same which was below here. If the blood pressure was suppose 5 and atmospheric pressure was 1, now, uh, sorry, the atmospheric pressure was also 5. But at a height, the atmospheric pressure is 1 but blood pressure is still 5. It will not change. As we have started earlier, that fluid always flows from high pressure region to low pressure region. So the blood starts flowing from high pressure region that is inside your body to outward where atmospheric pressure is less. Is it clear students? So that is the reason why the patient suffering from high blood pressure, they are not advised to go to the hill stations or higher altitudes. The same reason is that at higher altitudes, fountain pen leaks. Why? Because the air pressure inside the fountain pen is more as compared to the atmospheric pressure, which has decreased at higher altitude. So the excess pressure due to air inside the rubber tube forces the ink to leak out. 
Is it fine, children? Now, with this, I come to an end to today's interactive session. Children, you all are required to go through the notes and then read the same topic from your physics textbook also. Moreover, I'm giving you a homework. Kindly, you solve numerical number one to five given on page number 102 of your physics textbook. Thank you, students, and have a nice day.